who's that guy that I brought up the other day who's a British anthropologist? His argument essentially is that human beings have been in this particular form, this homo sapien form, for somewhere in their neighborhood of 300,000 years. What these fossils tell us is that our species, Homo sapiens, is 100,000 years older than we thought. We are a third older than we realised. When did humans become Homo sapiens? Was it 300,000 years ago, as suggested by the Jabal Irhud fossils of Morocco, or much older, as suggested by genetics? Multiple new studies suggest our species arose around 700,000 years ago, with some studies even going as far as 900,000 years ago, making us at least 400,000 years older than is commonly cited. For over a century, scientists have debated the origins of modern humans and where to draw the lines between ancient hominin groups. Should Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern Homo sapiens be considered separate species? Or are they merely distinct populations of a single sprawling human species? Recent genomic research, particularly the 2024 study partitioning the genomic journey to becoming Homo sapiens, has reshaped this discussion by examining when and how our lineages diverged and just how separate we truly were. At the heart of this argument lies the idea that Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans all share a common genomic foundation that predates their divergence. Key chromosomal rearrangements, most notably the fusion that created human chromosome 2 and the translocation of the PAR2 region from the X to Y chromosome, occurred well before modern and archaic lineages split. These rearrangements are found not only in Homo sapiens, but also in Neanderthals, and Denisovans. This pushes the roots of our shared lineage back at least 856,000 years, if not earlier. This finding implies that what makes us human at the level of our chromosomal structure was already in place before our lineages took separate evolutionary paths. If we base species distinctions on significant structural genomic differences, then this evidence supports viewing all three groups as subspecies or populations within a single Homo sapiens lineage. Around 900,000 years ago, a dramatic population bottleneck affected the ancestors of all later humans. This event, known as Event 1 in the study, may have driven the fixation of key genomic traits and marked the beginning of a genetic separation from other hominins. The bottleneck may have promoted reproductive isolation due to chromosomal incompatibilities, such as the chromosome 2 fusion. Yet, crucially, it appears to have impacted all lineages, Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans, suggesting a shared ancestor went through this event together. Roughly 650,000 years ago, known as Event 2, modern humans began to diverge from Neanderthals and Denisovans. However, this was not a clean break. Rather than suddenly branching into three isolated species, the lineages appear to have evolved in parallel, with intermittent gene flow and shared traits continuing long afterward. Genetic divergence was gradual, not absolute. Most functional changes, such as those affecting brain development or skull shape, emerged within Homo sapiens after this split, and only a few of these were truly unique to our lineage. The genomic landscape reflects this slow divergence. Regions of the genome known as human 650 markers, those which coalesced more recently than 650,000 years ago and are fixed in Homo sapiens, do not show a sharp boundary. Instead, many such regions are shared with Neanderthals and Denisovans or reappear in their genomes after episodes of interbreeding. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence against full species separation comes from what the study describes as Event 3, a wave of admixture between early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals around 350,000 years ago. This predated the well-known interbreeding that occurred after 60,000 years ago in the Middle East. Not only did gene flow happen, but it was sufficient to reintegrate ancestral variants into the Neanderthal genome that had previously been lost due to their small population size. This reintegration had important implications. The Neanderthal genome gained modern human alleles that had potential adaptive value. 
Yet strikingly most functional human variants, especially those related to cognition and development, did not make it into the Neanderthal genome. This suggests either that these mutations had fitness value only in Homo sapiens' specific niche, or that Neanderthals' small population size and genetic drift prevented their spread. Importantly, this also undermines the concept of full reproductive isolation. If modern humans and Neanderthals could exchange genes, produce fertile offspring, and even share functional traits, then the traditional biological species definition begins to falter. Despite this interbreeding, certain genomic innovations did remain largely confined to Homo sapiens. Among the 56 genes with recent human-specific functional variants, only a few were ever transferred to Neanderthals. These genes include SPAR G5, ARL13B, and ATRX, linked to brain development, cellular division, and neurological traits. Their near-total absence in Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes suggests these traits played a role in modern human uniqueness, especially in cognition. Yet these differences are still relatively minor on the scale of species differentiation. Many of these genes belong to pre-existing pathways shared across all three groups, and their functional impact may have depended heavily on ecological or cultural context. The differences are more nuanced than a complete biological divide. Biologists have long struggled with the species problem, how to define a species in the face of partial gene flow and complex traits. The biological species concept hinges on reproductive isolation, but Neanderthals and modern humans clearly interbred. Morphological differences such as robust skulls or facial structure vary even among modern human populations today and are influenced by environment, not only genetics. Genetic evidence suggests a continuum. The divergence between humans and Neanderthals is less than that seen between some subspecies of chimpanzees or wolves. The same goes for Denisovans. If Neanderthals and Denisovans were separate species, then so too would we have to define many living human populations as different species, a step most scientists are unwilling to take. Instead, researchers argue for seeing these groups as populations of a single cosmopolitan species. They point out that most derived human-specific traits emerged in the context of culture and ecological adaptation, not hardwired biological incompatibility. This mirrors the view of many anthropologists who increasingly refer to a braided stream of human evolution. Viewing Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern Homo sapiens as populations within a broader species reframes our understanding of human history. It acknowledges the deep shared ancestry and mutual influence between these groups while still respecting their uniqueness. It suggests that the boundaries of human are more porous and flexible than once thought. This model also better reflects archaeological evidence. Neanderthals showed signs of culture, symbolic behavior, and even potential language. Denisovans, while less understood, left behind traces of sophisticated tool use. Rather than inferior cousins, they were fellow travelers in the human story. The interbreeding between Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans took place in multiple locations and at different times, reflecting a complex pattern of contact and migration. Based on the 2024 study and supporting genetic and archaeological evidence, the earliest known interbreeding event, referred to as Event 3 in the study, occurred around 350,000 years ago, and it most likely took place in or near the eastern Mediterranean region or southwestern Asia. The most likely location for the earliest interbreeding around 350,000 years ago is the Levant, including modern-day Israel, Syria, and surrounding regions. This area has long been proposed as a geographic crossroads where archaic humans moving out of Africa would have encountered resident Neanderthal populations. The Levant is supported by both fossil finds, for example early Homo sapiens at school and Kafze, and the geographic feasibility of early movements between Africa and Eurasia. Some models suggest that early Neanderthal populations extended into southeastern Europe or the Caucasus, and early Homo sapiens or their ancestors may have pushed northward through this corridor. This could also have facilitated admixture events well before the better-known gene flow around 60,000 to 50,000 years ago. Later interbreeding events, particularly those involving Denisovans, likely occurred in Central Asia. 
The famous Denisova cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia has yielded fossils with both Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestry, including the individual known as Deni, a first-generation hybrid. This suggests a zone of overlap in Central Asia, where Neanderthals, Denisovans and possibly modern humans interacted. Some modern human populations in Papua New Guinea, the Philippines and Australia carry significant Denisovan DNA. This implies that additional interbreeding events occurred further east, possibly involving a now extinct Southeast Asian Denisovan population. These contacts likely took place after 50,000 years ago during the coastal migration of modern humans into Southeast Asia and Oceania. The earliest known interbreeding, 350,000 years ago, most likely occurred in Southwest Asia, possibly in the Levant or adjacent regions, during a time when early Homo sapiens lineages came into contact with archaic Eurasian populations. Later episodes of interbreeding, including those involving Denisovans, occurred further north in Central Asia and east into Southeast Asia. These multiple contact zones reflect the braided nature of human evolution, with overlapping migrations, genetic exchange, and complex population structure spanning hundreds of thousands of years. Based on the latest genomic research, the strongest scientific case is that Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern Homo sapiens were not separate species in the strict biological sense. They were distinct populations within a single species lineage, Homo sapiens in the broadest sense, whose differences arose gradually and were shaped by environment, isolation, and time. The divergence between us was real but incomplete. Our genomes still carry the traces of their legacy. We are not just descendants of Homo sapiens, we are the living product of an ancient network of populations that included Neanderthals and Denisovans as part of a single complex evolutionary experiment, humanity.